Okay, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the time complexity of quicksort. Quicksort in average case takes n log n time, whereas in worst case, it takes order n square time. In this video, I'm going to talk about the worst case time complexity of quicksort. So in before we get into the details of the time complexity, let's quickly go over how quicksort works. So in quicksort, we have to perform two steps repeatedly. So what are those two steps? Let me write it down. Selecting the pivot element and then partition. Okay. So what I mean by that? So the first step is to select a pivot. Let's say we have selected this element, element at this cell as pivot. Let's call it as pivot. And then we reshuffle, we will reshuffle this given array in such a way that pivot is placed between two regions okay a left and the right region so the left region will contain all the elements which are smaller than pivot and the right region will contain all the elements which are greater than pivot okay we will we will be doing it in place so this array will be rearranged in such a way that pivot will be placed at a location in such a way that all the elements to its right are greater than pivot and all the elements to its left are smaller than pivot. Now if you look at it carefully, what we are achieving here is that we are making sure that the place of the pivot is final or this is where you will find this pivot value in the final sorted output. Correct. So we have finalized the pivot's position. Now we need to take care of the left subarray which is here which contains all the elements which are less than pivot and also the right subarray which contains all the elements which are greater than pivot right we have just made sure that all the elements which are greater than pivot are moved to its right but they are not yet sorted and all the elements which are smaller than pivot are moved to its left but they are not yet sorted right so we will do the same process again so selecting the pivot and then partitioning around the pivot that is you know you partition around the pivot and then repeat right so you'll repeat it for the left and the right subarray again where you'll select a different pivot there and then you also have left and right left and right uh, subarrays around them right so and eventually once you uh, once you go through all the numbers and all the pivots are placed at their uh, their final location the array will be sorted so this this is the idea behind uh, quick sort how quick sort works right you can easily see that how we select pivot will greatly influence the efficiency or the performance of this quicksort algorithm right now let let's see how it affects performance of quicksort okay now let me take the array again i'm not going to take the numbers i'm tr i will try to explain it without taking an example now let's say our strategy to select pivot right for some reason every time this strategy is selecting a pivot which is the smallest number in the array okay so let's say in this case we have selected the smallest number so pivot p1 is equal to the smallest smallest number right now our task is to partition this given input array in such a way that p1 is placed at a location wherein all the elements to its right are greater than pivot okay and all the elements to its left are smaller than pivot now since p1 that is our pivot currently is the smallest element in the number the left region will not have any elements and the right region will have let's say if you have total n elements the right region will have n minus 1 elements which are all greater than the pivot p1 right now then uh, as we discussed earlier after creating those partitions we go and work on the partitions right because p1's position is now finalized now from this array we will select we will select a pivot element randomly right let's say let's call it as p2 and even in this case this p2 element is the smallest among this subarray okay let me call it, write it as smallest now what will happen is this p2 
after the partition this p2 will be placed at the zeroth location or at the front of the array and the left region will have no elements because p2 is the smallest and this right region will contain now n minus 2 elements correct n minus 2 elements on the right region and again from this we will select a pivot let's assume that every time we select a pivot we are getting the smallest number from the subarray right so for p3 pivot the right region will have n minus 3 okay so let me generalize this So basically, every time we are selecting the pivot, we are only able to form the right subarray, right? And each time it is the length of that right subarray is reducing by one. So initially it was n minus one, then the subarray will be let's say n minus two, then n minus three, n minus four, right? So and also the number of operations required to perform the partition is order of n okay is is the number of elements in that is the number of elements in that subarray so in this case it will be n minus 1 in this case it will be n minus 2 n minus 3 n minus 4 right so uh, if you look at them carefully and at the end it will be you know let's say it will be 0 okay so what is happening here is let's say if n was 8 if you think if you or let's take an exam let's take a smaller example if n was 5 5 minus 1 4 operations 5 minus 2 3 operations 5 minus 3 2 1 0 right so the number of total number of operations is going to be operations done at every level plus right you, you need to add up add all of them so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so it's nothing but the sum of n numbers right 1 to n numbers and some of we know that some of if you are doing sum of 1 to n numbers it will be order of it will be order of n square correct it will be order of n square so how so that is the reason why quicksort will take order n square time if the strategy which uh, we use for selecting pivot is really bad right in worst case it will identify a pivot which is you know which is not creating balanced left and right uh, regions right now let's quickly see what happens if we were able to create balanced left and right uh, regions so let's say that this was our given input array whose size was n and after choosing the pivot right, let's say p1 we form two subarrays and each of size n by 2 okay approximately n by 2 and then n by 4 n by 4 n by 4 as you can quickly see if we are able to come up with a pivot which which creates two partitions of equal size right this will form a Ba this will form the re the recursion tree will be a balanced binary tree and in case of balanced binary tree the height of such tree is always log of n the height of such tree is always log of n and the number of operations performed uh, for partition at every level is going to be n right n operations performed here as well so the total time complexity in this will be n n log n right so th but this will be in the best case if if we select best case where pivot, the selected pivot is always creating two partitions of equal size right in that case the recursion tree will be a balanced binary tree whose height is always log n and uh, if the height is log n and the number of operations that we perform on every level is n then the total time complexity will be n into number of levels or number of or the height right so which will be o of n log n cool i hope this video was useful please write in comments if you 
think if you have any feedback or how I can improve the video quality.